We won't keep. Okay, recording started. Hi, and uh, welcome to Lester Elim's Breaking a Bread service. It's good to be able to be together and just share around the table of the Lord. Let's just have a pray, shall we? Lord, we thank you for this time and this opportunity. Lord, your word says, as oft as we gather. Well, Lord, we're gathering together right now unto you. And as we gather together, Lord, we want to do that that you encourage us to do, which is meet around the Lord's table and remember you. And so, Lord, we are here right now. I pray, Lord God, that as we come, we will have prepared our hearts. Lord, we will have stilled our minds. Lord, as we come, what something is so precious to us. And just remember all that you have done for us. Amen. I'm going to ask Ali to read a portion of scripture um, on the crucifixion. Right, I'm reading from Luke chapter 23, verse 33 to verse 49. When they came to the place called the skull, there they crucified him and the criminals one on the right and the other on the left. But Jesus was saying, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they're doing. And they cast lots, dividing up his garments amongst themselves. And the people stood by looking on, and even the rulers were sneering at him, saying, he saved others, let him save himself, if this is the one, if this is Christ of God, his chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up to him, offering him sour wine and saying, if you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. Now above him was also this inscription saying, this is the king of the Jews. One, one of the criminals who were hanged there was hurling abuse at him saying, are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us. But the others answered and rebuking him said, do you not even fear God since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed are suffering just justly, for we are receiving what we deserve for our deeds, but this man has done nothing wrong. And he was saying, Jesus, remember me when you come in your kingdom. And he said to him, truly, I say to you, today you shall be with me in paradise. It was now about the sixth hour and darkness fell over the whole land until the ninth hour, because the sun was obscured and the, the veil of the table was torn in two. The, the veil of the temple, sorry, was torn in two. And Jesus, crying out with a loud voice, said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Having said this, he breathed his last. Now, when the centurion saw what had happened, he began praising God, saying, Certainly this man was innocent. And all the crowds who came together for this spectacle, when they observed what had happened, began to return, beating their breasts. And all his acquaintances and the women who accompanied him from Galilee were standing at a, a distance, seeing these things. And so, I wanted, wanted Al to read that today, just to remind us of the scene. You know, some quite often we we depict the Lord's table by, you know, going to the Last Supper or we go to um Corinthians 11 and and we talk about there what Paul says and of course the reality of all of that was the cross you know when it was the last supper the Passover meal and Jesus took the bread and he took the wine he was talking of what was to come the reality of the cross and there as Ali read that you know we we get a picture of the people that were stood around him, the soldiers that were mocking, the people that were scorning Jesus, you know, the onlookers that would just be gathering. And, and it talks about the women that were followers of Jesus, that had been his companions, that, that were there to watch him. 
suffer and die. And each one of those individuals would have had a different take on the cross. You've got the, you've got the two thieves who are hung there. And, and they're hung there because they deserve to be there. And one of them, one of them mockingly says something, and the other one says, well, we deserve to be here. He doesn't. What has he done? What has he done? And he cries out to Jesus. And Jesus responds to him. Today you'll be in paradise with me. Even on the cross, at the very last moments of his death, he cried out to Jesus. And then we get the ones when it, when it suddenly became black for three hours. The ones that suddenly who have been mockers turned away in tears running down their face as they realized that, wow, maybe this was, maybe this is the Son of God. You get the temple veil that was torn in two. You know, we sometimes think of it as being a piece of cloth. But it was said that the veil was anything between 12 and 18 inches thick. That it wasn't, it wasn't just one sheet of fabric, but it, but it was thick. And to, for that to be torn in two took, took the power of heaven. And all of this was happening all at this time. And Jesus, at one moment, <laughs> one moment in time, suddenly the sins of the whole world came upon him. And that's difficult for us to comprehend. You know, not the sins of just the moment, but our sins our wrongdoings into the future that the cross just was not sufficient for that moment but the cross is sufficient for today and praise God that it is because through that we have redemption and as he took as that moment came for the first time ever he felt the separation from his father he'd never known that before never known that separation never known that feeling that understanding but he cried out father forgive them for they know not what they do but he also cried out father why have you for sake of me he hadn't <laughs> God looking on must have wanted to do what any father would have done would have interceded but he knew that he couldn't because God so loved us that he gave his only begotten son and so we come around the Lord's table now. And Jesus, on the night that he was betrayed, he took the bread and he broke it and he said, this is my body, which is broken for you. Take it, eat it, and receive it in Jesus' name. And likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And after giving thanks, he said this, this cup now represents the new covenant, the blood of the new covenant, 
This is my blood which is shed for you. Take it, receive it. In Jesus' name. So, Lord, we thank you. Lord, don't ever let us forget the cross. Don't ever let us think of it lightly. Take of it in, in, with insincerity. But Lord, we gather around <laughs> and we see what you did for each and every one of us. Lord, we thank you. Thank you that you went all the way for us. That you carried our sins and you removed them as far as the east is from the west. <laughs> You cleansed us. You made us right before our God. So, Lord, we thank you for all of that. And we want to give you all the praise and all the honor and all the glory. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen.